ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? This is Jeremy Till, the host of the Operator Podcast. We'll be taking you on a journey with us, interviewing some of the top performers in their field on how they operate and get the job done. At the end of the day, we want to be our best. We're going to help provide the information, the data, and the science of how to achieve that mentally, physically, and spiritually. Let's go! go! Live a great story. We have the founder, Zach, here at the Operator Podcast. Zach is starting to inspire the nation with experiences from San Diego to New Jersey to Austin. The message of Live a Great Story is super impactful to me personally. I've noticed his artwork around the city of Austin for the last couple years and really getting introduced to him at at a Lewis House uh, presentation here at our downtown gym when Lewis launched his book. I got introduced to Zach through Hefe, another guest that we've had on the Operator Podcast, and just seeing this artistic entrepreneur creation evolve has been inspirational to me. It's an honor to have him here at the podcast and excited to share his personal story. Yeah, I really, you know, want to start out with is like the origin of Live a Great Story and where the origin of that manifested into form and then just kind of get us into like where that first idea of this whole thing started. So... Live a Great Story kind of never really started. It always has been around in some way or another because it's so tightly woven into kind of my story and my journey. Um, There's been bits and pieces of it all along. And over time, those came together to form Live a Great Story. So um, it's a, it's a, it, I've pretty much been doing stuff for about 10 years, trying to figure out what my passions are, interests, skills, you know, aptitude tests, entrepreneurial endeavors, um, just learning, self-education, like all those things. I didn't go to college. So I was always just, I knew that I wanted to start a business, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I didn't, you know, being like 16, 17, 18, 20, like still trying to figure out so many of those questions. And so, um, you know, I, I did a lot of learning through that experience and, and a lot of trial and error and tons of failure and very fast failure and quick iterations and just like learning on the fly. And I learned pretty young from a lot of people that have been through a lot more than I had um, that, you know, failure is just, just a thing and, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's, and if you do it well, then it's a good thing. And then failures are really just stepping stones to next steps. And um, you know, when you're, when we're younger, we, can fail a lot faster and the repercussions aren't as big as you get older. And so, um, so I just did a lot of like learning and then, uh, kind of like the very, very beginning traces of live a great story came from, um, I I read a book by Donald Miller. He's an author who lives in Nashville and he, um, the book's called a million miles in a thousand years. And the theme of that story, he wrote another book before it became really successful. And then he had to like, kind of backtrack and be like, what's my story? Like, why am I here? You know, I'm now I'm successful, but that doesn't mean that I'm like happy. It doesn't mean that I've like made it or anything. And so this book is kind of his story about how he kind of wrote his story. And the theme of it is, um, you know, like live your story. Like you have this power to craft your story and make it what you want to be. And so I read that book and then shortly after reading that, uh, relatively shortly after that, I went to go travel. So uh, I kind of sometimes say that the seed was that book and then traveling really watered that seed. And so when I was 22, 22, uh, 2012, I bought a ticket to Europe and it ended up being a one way ticket and traveled all around Europe for about seven months. So uh, I'm Hungarian, I grew up in five years in Hungary. So my dad's Hungarian, so I have my Hungarian passport and uh, citizenship so I can live in in the EU and so I figured out that I could just go and like travel around not to worry about visa issues and uh, I were I didn't go to college I worked after college and then used some college money to to fund the trip and um, it was such an awesome experience just because 
uh, well, it's just an awesome experience. But through that, I just met so many rad people from everywhere. Like one time I walked into my hostel and you know, the, the, the typical question that you ask anybody on the road is like, Oh, where are you from? And, and, you know, we we're all like drinking downstairs and there's this one dude in the hostel and he's like North Korea. And I just like set my beer down and I was like, dude. And we talked for probably about an hour two hours, just like all about North Korea and like him escaping and like his journey. But then like even less more casual conversations just with passing, like, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm from Texas. And they're like, oh, well, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about Bush or what do you think about guns or what do you think about, you know, all these things that we kind of take for granted life here in the u.s that other people don't and so you get to have these conversations with people from backgrounds different backgrounds different places different you know religions everything just different people and uh but we realize that we're all just people when it all is said and done and no matter where like i guess what are the characteristics that make us different are kind of the things that also make us the same and we're all just walking down our own journey and trying to figure it out and um and, and so that's kind of where the idea and like kind of the essence of Live Great Story started is that, you know, I just realized from meeting all these people that we're all just doing it. And if you can do it for you and you try to figure that out and you try to learn and you try to grow and you try to like move forward in your story, whatever that looks like, uh, then that inspires the people around you to do the same. So maybe like you can lead by example and then uh, it also attracts people who sharpen you as well. So um, that's kind of the essence of what Live a Great Story is all about is like as a brand, we just really want to inspire people to keep going because no one can tell you what to do or how to do it or this is the right way or don't do this. Like there's lessons we can learn, but when it all comes down to it in the end, we have to make those decisions and we have to own those decisions. And so uh, as a brand, we just really want to inspire people to, to, to make those decisions and be conscious of it. And, you know, it's all up and down. It's all failure successes and, you know, moving back, moving forward. But, you know, that's that's what it's all about. And everyone has to go through it. And so we just want to, you know, kind of encourage people on on their personal journey. Mm hmm. So that's awesome, man. Um, and say the title of that book again, you read a million miles in a thousand years by Donald Miller. I like it's it. a great book. It's amazing. Cool. Okay, so it was an idea, so I thought. So a lot of people have a lot of good ideas and a lot of experiences and travel and all that stuff, but not everybody takes it and puts it into a image and then plasters it places, right? So there's a there's a difference there in that action step, and then so tell me about that idea and then really because that's how in austin where your brand i would say is pretty predominant within artistic and you know movers around the city they see your brand and so tell me what was the bridge because I, I don't know if you see yourself as an entrepreneur as much as an artist or you see yourself as an artist that's an entrepreneur kind of frame it for people and sense of how you took an idea into action and then so I usually, the words I usually say is I've, I've kind of always been creative entrepreneurial. I would definitely not say I'm an artist. Uh, I think that artists are the people that, you know, do what they do every day. So to be an artist, to be a writer, to be, you know, a musician, it's like you wake up and you paint, you write, you play every day. And that's, that's, that's how I think that those are the people that are successful is they do it consistently. And so, um, on the creative side, I've always been more creative and, and just kind of like, I always pick up bits and pieces from people and, um, just design and marketing, a lot of marketing thoughts and like, how do people see things and how do we influence people and nudge people in certain directions. And so, um, when, I, so the travels was the theme of live and before live was really even a thing. So it was kind of that essence that, um, that's where it came that I came to really understand that for myself. And then when I got back from Europe, I, I came back specifically because I knew I wanted to take next steps as a professional in a professional journey. Like I wanted to get a job. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be in an environment where I could be around people that I could learn from that would push me forward professionally. And I didn't really know what that looked like. I pretty much had 
a resume of started this, started this, started this, started this, didn't go to school, started this. And like very proud of that journey because it was kind of at that time where people, everybody still went to college about five, six years ago. Everybody went to college. Now, like there's a big push that there's alternative education and you know, online and all these different ways that, you know, if you don't go to college, it's not a bad thing. But I was kind of like right at that cusp of, no, I'm not going to college and, and people would still give you a funny look. Um, so, but when I came back, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, uh, while I was traveling, I was writing a bit on my blog and just like talking about themes and somehow that live a great story theme came up. So that phrase came up and it, um, it showed up on my blog, um, in a square format. So the originally the very first live a great story was similar typeface, um, pretty similar, but it was in a square, not the circle that most people know. And so when I got back, I kind of, you know, I, I, um, I had a clothing company in high school that was like just around Austin, like pretty small, but I, I kind of revived that and made two shirts kind of travel themed shirts. And those tags said live a great story on them. So that's kind of like the first real world that, that square. And then those tags were the first, um, realizing of live a great story as like a phrase and something. And so kind of to promote those shirts, I did, um, I did three, uh, graffiti installs around the city. So I have like pretty nice cursive handwriting. So I went out and had red spray paint and, uh, right underneath on Caesar, right underneath the, um, the train bridge, there's that big brick wall and it's always painted over. Like they don't leave it up there for long at all, but it's a really big wall. So right there I put up, um, if your life was a book, would anybody read it? And then I put up another one that said, do you have campfire stories? And then the third one was live a great story in red spray paint cursive on underneath Mopac where the reminder is now. And <clears throat> I didn't really think too much about it. And it was just action, you know, like t just take action and learn and adjust. And, um, I was still like trying to figure out what was next. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was, I wanted to leave Austin. I wasn't sure where I was going to go. I wanted to start fresh in a new city. Uh, but then a couple of weeks later, someone tagged me on Instagram that someone had taken a picture of that live a great story and they had hashtagged it. So I clicked on the hashtag and there was a couple dozen pictures of that same live a great story. I clicked on the geo tag town, Lake running trail. There was more. And I was like, Hmm, that's pretty cool that people, you know, it, it touched people in a certain way. And they had these cool captions. Like each one was very unique and personalized that they were interpreting it in their own way. Didn't really think much of it. And then uh, pretty soon after that, I ended up moving to San Diego and, um, it was, I moved there with pretty much not knowing anybody I had met one dude for a couple of days and then was like, I'm going to go just give it a shot. Once again, action, take a step. You can always adjust and flex a little bit, but that like forward momentum is you gotta, you gotta start, you gotta keep that going. And so I moved to San Diego, thought I could go in get a job, get something really easily, be in marketing and have this like, you know, just I thought it would work out a lot easier than it did and it didn't. And it was actually a really difficult transition. I ended up getting a job at a bar, like really, 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 really cool bar. Uh, it's called polite provisions in San Diego. It's like award winning and they're still family. Uh, but I was at the door and it was a terrible position and it was just like soul crushing standing there talking to people and no one wanted to talk to you. And, and it was just a difficult transition. And, and uh, I still didn't know what I wasn't do. All the jobs were like, I wasn't getting any jobs, offers. I was like applying, applying, applying for months and it just wasn't working out. So kind of as a personal reminder, I went out and put up another live a great story in San Diego. This one was a little bit bigger, same thing, red cursive spray paint on a white wall. Once again, that, that got tagged a bunch on Instagram. So the hashtag kept going, people started sharing more stuff. And so there was momentum there. And then Kind of the next step is to is because the people because the people that were sharing it s had such uh, intimate responses to it. I wanted to keep putting it out there, and so um, the first steps were the squares. So I printed out a bunch of normal, you know, printer paper, eight, eight and a half by eleven squares, cut them out and put them up. So a lot of them went up in Austin, a lot of them went up in San Diego, and I would get off working at the bar two o'clock, whatever, late at night. And then just go cruise the city with a Lululemon bag and a roller and some some wheat paste that I actually was mixing at the time, which d doesn't work very well. <laughs> it's hard to get the percentages right. Um, and so, but those those started gaining momentum too. So people started noticing them. 
it turned into a circle and then turned into some stickers. We printed like a hundred stickers. Okay, so that's a big thing though. So I don't want to yeah. rush over that. I mean, the square to a circle. Tell me about that. So, yeah, it was a really big thing actually. And I, I think in the messaging of Live, it's about, it's, I think one of the reasons that it's so appealing is that it's not, it's like a statement, but people don't take it as like a go do this. And I think that the square is more of a bold statement that it's, it has edges, it's rigid, it's structured, and a circle is more fluid, you know, there, there, there's a very big difference in those shapes. And so I was thinking about, you know, either one and I switched to the circle. I talked to some design friends and, you know, like, which one do you think? And, um, yeah, change it to a circle and then haven't really gone back. <laughs> I still have, uh, whenever I come back to Austin at my parents' house, they still have one of the original squares on the door. So like every time I shut the door at my mom's house, there's like one of the originals, which is a couple of years old now at this point, which is pretty cool. And there's still a couple that are floating around and, and it's cool to see those pop up every once in a while. Um, a lot of them have, because of like the, the mixing issue, they came off or they got painted over and most cities, especially San Diego and a lot of the like LA and things like that, they're pretty vigilant on uh, street art and covering things up. So most things don't last long, but every once in a while they slip through the cracks. Yeah. So, so you applied it and then how, you know, th- th- you started this, you say a couple of years ago. So do you, when was it that it started officially? What year? 2014. So 2014. Okay. July, so, August. July, August. So we're coming up on the three year anniversary. Nice. Okay. And so you've done this and I know you've kept traveling. So like, what have you done for income over the last two years? Or like, have you had more odd jobs or like, have you monetized it in a way that helps you to live day to day? So I worked at that bar for quite a while while <laughs> doing live. Um, it was a pretty hectic thing because um, I, I guess I pretty early on knew that, well, in the very, very beginning while I was still working at the job or working at the bar and doing live at night, I, the original idea was that I could take this format and present it to companies. So I was like, everybody has seen this. I can put it in places that everybody will see it. It will become well known enough that when I go into a job interview at a marketing or agency, um, that could be like, Hey, this is what I do. Like you've seen this. I have a background in it. Like I just want to keep learning and keep doing things similar to this in the digital space and keep, you know, I want a job. Mm. Here's what I can do. And so, um, it, that was like the original idea. And at one point, I was with my buddy on my couch and you know, we were just hanging out and he's like, dude, I, it was a couple months in at this point. He's like, I think you're onto something here. Like you should, you should keep going with this. Like keep your, I don't know what it is, but there's something right about what you're doing. And that was kind of the first time that was the first time that I really committed to live that I decided that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to, I stopped looking for jobs. I stopped applying. I worked at the bar and then I would work, you know, through the night at the bar, I would get off and we paste and then I would pretty much wake up in the morning, go to a coffee shop, you know, built the original website, built the idea, I was reading, trying to figure out what to do with it, just like building a brand and, and a business and planning. And, um, and so that cycle lasted for a long time. Like I worked at the bar for pretty much like two years or so and, uh, something, something like that. Yeah. And, um, and so that whole cycle of it was definitely what I spent most of my time doing and, and just trying to figure out what live was. And for a long time, like a long time, pretty much for three quarters to like most of, most of the uh, time that live has been alive, it's, it's been really confusing. So, and it's once again, a gift and a curse because people are, you know, in the beginning, they're like, what is this? And we had buttons. So I'd be at the bar and I'd, have, I'd rock a button on my shirt and, be checking IDs and people would be like, oh, I love your button. And I would just take it off and hand it to them. And they'd be like, Oh my God, I love this. Like, what is it? I'm like, I don't know. I found it on the ground <laughs> or like, you know, and, and that idea that there wasn't anything attached to it or, or that it was just a message and an idea. 
it was like, you know, some of the wording we used was like, it's a tempo, right? So like sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, like sometimes you're, you're cruising, vibrating really fast and then you slow down and that's life, right? Like, so it's a tempo, it's an idea, never really called it a movement. A lot of people say that, but, um, it was just this thing. It was, it was just, it was just a thing. Yes. Um, and so it really took a lot of time to figure out what it was. And, uh, I was listening to some the other day and there, and the guy was saying, he's like the time, you know, time is like one of the most valuable things that entrepreneurs have. Right. And like it, most people given enough time, enough of a runway, will figure out how to monetize. They'll figure out how to scale. They'll figure out all the potholes and how to avoid them and, and move forward. Right. Like starting a business just takes time. And so, um, while I was building live, I was working at the bar ended up becoming a bar back and life was way better after becoming a bar back instead of working at the door. And, uh, but yeah, pretty much spent most of the time and just had a coffee shop and, and building it. And then the products came after that. And so mainly um, that was still like e-commerce and trying to figure out how to sell more stuff and, and, and get people to rep, rep it and, you know, put a sticker on their phone or wear a shirt and um, just getting it to new people. And the stickers were a big thing that helped spread it. But for a long time, yeah, it was, it was not monetized very well. And is still like three years in definitely still trying to figure out how to like hyper monetize it um it definitely makes money i don't pay myself off of it just yet um it has an income we have an e-commerce presence and we're building out these different monetary streams um that it's but you know especially like building a brand just takes time it takes branding it takes identity it takes you know relationships with people and for people to spread it and live is such a uh, a community focused brand that it's just, it just takes time and it, and it gets passed from person to person, to person, to person, to person. And, um, that's something that although, you know, we're working on figuring out how to like scale it a lot bigger through like digital and different things and storytelling and more on the, um, uh, production side of things. So like words and writing stories about people and pictures and videos and things like that. Uh, it just, you know, it's just the grind and it's just, just slowly spreading it. Yeah, no doubt. So, you know, what's unique is that your friend that spoke life into you, right. Um, and the uniqueness and the importance of friends, you know, when I came to Austin to start my fitness business, I was on the couch. I had just done the Buffalo Springs Iron Man, half Iron Man. And I was kind of like, languish like all like what am i gonna do with my life uh, you know this whole like you know 24 year old 23 year old kind of like pathetic self and for myself and, and my friend just said move to austin train people work them out hard and i was like all right i can do that i can do that and it was like such a subtle like this is what you should do and it like drops into us and it's like all right and like literally that statement made me take action you know and and when everything changes and shifts in you um to to do what you do so it's unique that the friends around us can really cultivate you know the environment for us to take commitment steps yeah i think community is such a huge part and like the people that surround us i mean the the saying about that is we're the average of the five people we hang out with and i agree with that and a little bit but there's also the other parts of it where like the, the people, you know, we can all learn from other people. Like everybody is a learning experience or a learning opportunity for them, right? Like we can teach and learn all the time. And so um, it's it's an important part. And, and then being open to people's thoughts and suggestions and, you know, that flippant comment that my friend made, like Oscar, he probably doesn't even know, like I've... I tell the story a lot. Like that was like the first time, like I remember very vividly and he probably doesn't really remember it. Right. And, but it was just like hanging out on my couch just on an afternoon. And, uh, so yeah, I definitely think that the people that we surround ourselves with are, are huge and both ways, like positive and negative and just being conscious of it and, and thinking about it. And, um, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, no doubt. So I know you just recently had your live a great story kind of like, gathering here in Austin. I see that you're doing one in San Diego. Is that correct? Yeah. So live a great story breaks down into three main focuses. So it's media reminder products and events and experiences. So we just, even though we've been hosting a lot of events kind of over the last 
three years and trying to figure it out a lot of trial and error we've done a lot of photography events people have hosted photo walks and scavenger hunts in other cities um through live and now it's kind of found this sweet spot of these mini conferences where we can really highlight we call it like celebrating the city's awesomeness right so like in austin we brought out a bunch of people we had like 12 speakers all that are doing different things in the city and um and and but creating an environment where that inspiration can spread person to person. And so there's a lot of stuff that happens digitally, but when you can get people to, you know, high five and hug in real life, then that's where the flame of inspiration really travels from person to person. And, uh, and there's, there's energy when you bring people together and like that creates a bigger thing than it could be independently of itself. And so, um, so we're calling these mini conferences and, um, like city, city, focus mini conferences and so the next one's in san diego we're working with uh we have like a super rad ambassador and um group of people in san in uh in philly um brit james philly unknown and they're like crushing it out there and they just like they're they're doing a lot of good stuff with the homeless and the um, brits and in, in like the animal world so he's helping out with animals and they're just they just have like a really strong community so that's where the next one's gonna be in philly it's looking like probably July and then uh, we're thinking probably Miami after that and then Nashville and Denver and some other cities and but the idea behind these is that we can find uh, we can we already have presences in presence in these cities and so there's already people that are interested or you know ambassadors that we have that are coming on board but we really just want to create these experiences for people and be able to bring them together. And a lot of them will be semi hands off, although we'll do a lot of stuff from our side of it and like trying to organize it. And um, we really want cities to kind of take ownership of that. And, and like, who's, who's cool in your city? Like, I don't know who's cool in Nashville. I don't know who's doing anything. Um, I don't know where to host it. I don't know who are the, like the brands that are for food or drinks or, um, you know, but who can we hang out with in these cities where we can collectively lift everybody up and and just just hang out. Mm-hmm. So, what really inspires you to keep going forward? Like, what would you say is your why, your inspiration? So, I think I think a big thing for me, a big thing for me is the pursuit. It's it's really just that. Like I've really, even I've, I used to have like shiny object syndrome and, you know, like all my, all my different things from blogging to media to, you know, trying to start an event company to all these different like multi-level marketing, all this stuff. Um, and I was just like bounce around a lot and it was always like looking for kind of that quick success or like that, that next step or like next idea or next anything. And I've really come to know that that just like the grind and just the, that focus and and that persistence, I guess, is what it's it's so it's just part of it. So really fuels me on my own. And then the external part of it is that I know that live can have such a massive impact around the world. So that if I do my part right, I can build a team of awesome people. I can bring together like a really solid group that can even multiply that effect across the world and so at this point um it's really about just like making the biggest difference and like putting the people in those seats to make that difference and to 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 just make an impact and it's crazy like on the backside of what people when they like when it comes full circle when people figure out that live is a is a thing and that it's not just a sticker or that they're you know a lot of people in austin have seen it, but they don't know that it's a brand. And we don't, they don't know that we tell stories. They don't know that we have events, but when it comes full circle and that like connection hits and they're like the emotional connection to it, I mean, and how it's impacted them and move them forward. That's definitely like the biggest thing. I mean, we just want more people to have that to, and it doesn't have to be a massive thing. It doesn't have to be like, you have to quit your job or, you know, live inspired you to quit your job or like maybe your family member passed away and it reminds you of them or your friend or, you know any of the crazy stories that come back around but it can just be that like daily reminder like keep going you know that's really what it wants to we want it to be it's just like every time you put on a shirt or look at your phone or like you know open your computer and the stickers on there it's like just keep going keep doing it and and um it's that it's that like times a million like how can we just get that idea to 
to move forward at like all around the world and, and then bring people together and spread inspiration. So it's crazy because it's like growing and there's like a lot of things clicking now and it's like, how can this be? It's really still small. It's, it's still tiny. It's like me and like a couple people um, that are like part time in it. And, and, you know, they're they're trying to figure out how to th- that whole scaling side of it. Um, so who's your team? So it's. So I have about a handful of people and various degrees. So I have like a right hand man in San Diego. He's like a master photographer and he's been there since the beginning. We screen printed shirts together in my like living room, built a screen press for 40 bucks. You know, the first live great story shirts were screen printed on, um, by hand. And that was quickly realized that that that's not a, not a good option. Um, so he's been around and then, um, I have an awesome girl here in Austin we just have like an intern leave and a new intern come in and then there's like some marketing people that are kind of freelance marketing and then um all the production and shipping is from a warehouse now like as of 2017 everything is uh hands off on the production side of it so um and then that's pretty much it right now and and so it's it's still tiny and like definitely still really small and uh but it's cool because that potential to grow is, is like right there. And it's, and that's one thing that's really exciting for me is like how to do that the right way. And like, how do you build the right team and communication and Mm -hmm. structure and all of the, um, the systems and, and how is that like all the communication, everything. So, um, it's like right on the cusp always. (laughs) Absolutely. So you have stickers and you have shirts and flags and hats. The flags and are patches awesome. And patches. Yeah. Okay. And you sell it on your website. Everything is on liveagreatstory.com. Nice. That's so good. Awesome. Anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Um, just come hang out. People that are listening and want to just say hi, you know, and that's, that's a big step. And, uh, Instagram is probably our, our best spot to, to follow the action and just really get a dose of inspiration from what's happening in the brand, like around the world and people sending in stickers and, um, just grab a sticker pack. We call them inspiration kits. Just grab some stickers and it won't take long to like really understand what lives all about. And if you just put one on your phone and give a couple away to people and, um, just like it's, it's pretty magical. Um, what happens when when you do that it's a it's a really easy step but it it opens up a lot of connections and the cool part is that live reminders really um we say that they're a spark of connection so people that it 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 catches people and it and when people actually like initiate off of that then they're usually pretty similar people and and uh, at that point it kind of transitions from what live is into like the last, Oh, what is your sticker? Well, you know, where'd you get it? What's it all about? But really quickly it's like, no, what's your story? Or like, what are you working on? Or, you know, are you living a great story? And, and it's either the person asking the question or the person, the, the receiver. Uh, but it, it, it creates a lot of cool connections like that. So, um, yeah, just grab a sticker pack and spread the inspiration. Awesome, brother. Well, we appreciate appreciate you, and I know that you're going to do some work here at our downtown location. So we're super excited to have your brand Stoked. and your your message here, man. So so super great to have you. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on the Operator Podcast. Please join us on our virtual platforms: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we will see you soon.